Hello and welcome back, my friend, to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast. I am your host, Heather. I have been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. The Renaissance English History Podcast is the original Tudor podcast going for 15 years this year. This channel is where I put all of my episodes from all of my shows, as well as lots of extra content like this video right here. Today, we are talking about the most romantic spot in Tudor England. February is, after all, love month here at the Renaissance English History Podcast. We're talking about all things related to love and romance, Galentine's Day, all of that. So today, the most romantic spots in Tudor England. So let's get right into it. In Tudor England, romance was woven with threads of opulence, intrigue, and a passion that often bordered on the realm of legend. It was an era marked by grand gestures, secret love letters, and courtly dances under the watchful eyes of the monarchy. Today, we will explore some of the most romantic spots that tell tales of love both fulfilled and forbidden within the Tudor court. Our first stop is Hever Castle in Kent, a place etched with the echoes of young love and royal courtship. This castle served as the childhood home of Anne Boleyn, the bewitching second wife of Henry VIII, whose love story with the king has captivated historians and romantics alike. Of course, it didn't end well, but we're not focusing on that part. Surrounded by a lush moat set against the backdrop of the Kentish countryside, Hever Castle is a snapshot of Tudor romance at its most idyllic. Strolling through the gardens, one can't help but be transported back to the days of Anne's youth, where she might have wandered along what is now known as Anne Boleyn's Walk. This path, adorned with a collection of plants and flowers that were popular during the Tudor period, offers a fragrant glimpse into the past. The vibrant blooms and carefully manicured hedges frame the castle in a way that makes it easy to imagine the beginnings of Anne's fateful romance with Henry VIII, a love that would change the course of English history. Next up, Sudley Castle. Nestled in the heart of Gloucestershire, Sudley Castle holds a unique place in Tudor history as the final resting place of Queen Catherine Parr, the last wife of Henry VIII, the only queen consort to be buried on private grounds. Beyond its historical significance, Sudley is a testament to the enduring beauty and romance of the Tudor period with its breathtaking gardens and timeless architecture. The castle's grounds are a particular highlight with the Queen's Garden standing out as a jewel in its crown. This exquisite garden, meticulously planted with herbs and flowers that were cherished during the Tudor period, offers a serene and fragrant oasis. Walking through the garden, visitors are enveloped in the scents and colors of the past, evoking a sense of connection to the lives of those who once wandered these same paths. Sidley Castle's romantic allure is further enriched by its connections to other notable Tudor figures like Lady Jane Grey and Elizabeth I, adding layers of intrigue and passion to its history. The castle's blend of natural beauty, historical gravitas, and romantic legends makes it a compelling destination for anyone looking to immerse themselves in the story of Tudor love and legacy. Now we're going to talk about the Tower of London. A fortress with a tapestry of roles throughout history stands as a monument to the complexity of Tudor England. Far beyond its notorious reputation as a place of imprisonment and execution, the tower was also a royal palace, a secure residence for monarchs and their entourages. Its stone walls have witnessed the ebb and flow of power, passion, and tragedy, making it a pivotal backdrop for some of the most poignant love stories of the Tudor period. Among the tower's echoing corridors and within its imposing cells, the tales of Anne Boleyn and Lady Jane Grey unfold. Stories of love entwined with the highest stakes of political intrigue. Anne Boleyn's imprisonment and subsequent execution within the tower's confines Mark, one of history's most dramatic reversals of fortune from a queen celebrated for her charm and intelligence to a condemned prisoner. Similarly, Lady Jane Grey, known as the Nine Days Queen, found her fate sealed within these walls, her brief reign ending in tragedy. Despite its somber history, the Tower of London possesses an undeniable romance, accentuated by its picturesque settings like Tower Green and the Medieval Palace. These spots offer a glimpse into the tower's dual nature as both a stage for royal ceremonies and a silent witness to the personal dramas of those who walked its grounds. The juxtaposition of beauty and tragedy imbues the tower with a profound sense of romanticism, making it an emblematic site of Tudor England's rich and tumultuous history. 
Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire stands as a testament to one of the most captivating courtships of the period, that of Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, and Queen Elizabeth I. Dudley's profound affection for Elizabeth was showcased in the grandeur of Kenilworth Castle, where he spared no expense in transforming the fortress into a palace fit for a queen. The castle's association with their legendary romance adds a layer of intrigue and allure to its storied stones. Central to the castle's romantic narrative is the Elizabethan garden meticulously recreated to mirror the opulence of Dudley's efforts to woo the Virgin Queen. These gardens, with their intricate designs and fragrant blooms, served as the backdrop for the elaborate entertainments designed to enchant Elizabeth. Walking through the garden, one can almost hear the echoes of music and laughter, a vivid reminder of the lavish spectacles that once played out on this very spot. The ruins of Kenilworth Castle evoke a poignant sense of romantic nostalgia, standing as silent sentinels to the grandeur and spectacle of the Elizabethan period. They serve as a visual reminder of the ephemeral nature of power and passion, inviting contemplation on the fleeting moments of human connection amidst the relentless march of history. Finally, Hampton Court Palace, one of Henry's most splendid residents, stands as a monument to the grandeur and opulence of Tudor England. Renowned for its breathtaking beauty, the palace has been a backdrop for countless tales of romance, intrigue, and royal splendor. Its sprawling structure and exquisite gardens paint a picture of royal life that was as much about public display as it was about private indulgence. The romantic allure of Hampton Court is best embodied in its opulent state apartments and the enchanting gardens that surround them. These spaces were designed not just for the business of governance, but also for the art of courtship and celebration. The palace's halls and chambers, adorned with lavish tapestries and paintings, set the stage for the elaborate dances and banquets that define Tudor social life. It was here that Henry VIII and his court engaged in the intricate dance of Tudor politics and personal relationships, underpinned by the rituals of courtship and alliance. The gardens of Hampton Court, with their meticulously designed flower beds, majestic fountains, and secluded walkways, offered romantic escapes from the rigors of court life. They served as a private haven for the whispered conversations, clandestine meetings, and leisurely strolls away from the prying eyes of the court. In these gardens, the natural beauty of the landscape intertwined with the man made splendor of the palace, creating an idyllic setting for the pursuits of love and leisure that were as much a part of the Tudor royalty as the politics that played out within the palace walls. These storied locations across Tudor England, from the intimate gardens of Hever to the ruins of Kenilworth, continue to captivate the imagination. They are not merely historical sites, but living monuments to a period defined by the intricate dance of love, power, and intrigue. As we journey through these spaces, we're invited to listen for the whispers of courtly love and the rustle of silk gowns bridging the centuries, to touch the essence of Tudor romance that still lingers in the air. So thank you so much for listening, my friends. If you are still here and you enjoyed this episode, I sure would appreciate a press of that like button, and I hope I earned your subscription to my channel where I post content like this on the regular. Thanks so much for being here. I'm so glad I shared the planet with you. Don't forget to drink your water, and I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.